RPGs are among some of the most satisfying video games to play. Their complex progression systems and intricate storylines make for an unforgettable experience that can't be found elsewhere. That complexity can also mean difficulty. Here are 10 hard RPGs you should play. At least I think they're hard. Dungeon crawling is typically associated with ARPG giants such as Diablo and Path of Exile like Legends of Grimrock 2. Darkest Dungeon is a much slower and more methodical dungeon crawler than those titles. It's much harder too. Many argue it's too punishing to be considered fun. Similar to games like XCOM, Darkest Dungeon's turn-based combat is mostly percentage-based. Few things are guaranteed in this game besides the likelihood of a character's death. Sanity is a core mechanic that players must manage or they risk losing their hard-earned characters to the twisted creatures that lie in the darkness. From Software's Bloodborne took the winning formula that Demon Souls and Dark Souls had created and placed it in the Victorian area inspired Yarnum. The city of Yarnum has far more of a horror theme than any of the Soulsborne titles, though there is an odd beauty in this city's darkness like something out of a gothic fairy tale. The game setting isn't the only thing differentiating Bloodborne from the Dark Souls trilogy as the game also has a far more aggressive style to its combat. Bloodborne swaps methodical shield-wielding patience for fast gun and sword action, while rewarding players for their aggression by offering them the chance to regain health if they land a few blows. This mechanic certainly doesn't make the game any easier though, as risking an extra attack will often result in a swift death. Magic and fantasy go well together for any RPG setting but few games portray a world with magical elements as well as the gothic series. The setting of gothic is rather grim, forcing humans to mine for magical ore that might help humanity win a losing war against the orcs. Things go horribly wrong and the miners end up controlling part of the colony and plan to escape. The main character is caught in the middle of this. No, no one can be trusted and playing as a good guy like most RPGs has conditioned players to do will blow up spectacularly here. Controls are also clunky by modern standards further increasing the difficulty of Gothic's already brutal combat. Most gamers accustomed to CRPG titles will consider Pillars of Eternity to be a rather easy game, but many forget just how cumbersome and complex this genre can be. Pillars of Eternity was confusing to many due to its changes to core stats and real-time combat with boss. This wouldn't be an issue normally if not for the game demanding players to have 100% ability uptime across 6 characters. All while the game is running in real time. The pause button helps alleviate this but Pillars of Eternity's clunky mechanics make this game much harder than most and is likely the reason its sequel Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire chose turn based combat instead. Never has a game evoked a mixture of melancholy and accomplishment quite like Dark Souls. This franchise is frequently regarded as the hardest series of games ever made. While that is arguably hyperbole, it comes from a place of truth. Death is a learning experience in Dark Souls. Souls, the game's currency used to level up and upgrade gear, are dropped on death. Dying a second time causes those souls to be lost forever. 
This amplifies every combat encounter's intensity and this reaches a fever pitch on the game's boss fights that can kill players in two hits. Its difficulty helps teach players to overcome insurmountable odds and better themselves, both in-game and out. Dark Souls might make players rage frequently but it is the quintessential example of how games are an art form. Based on the difficulty of the first game, Legend of Grimrock 2's challenging combat likely came as a byproduct of the game's larger scale and scope. Players must move carefully through the game's large dungeons that are riddled with traps, puzzles, and plenty of monsters. Unlike most dungeon crawlers, Grimrock 2 has a fully explorable open world that is filled with secrets and treasure. If anyone speeds through this game and ignores side content, they'll be in for a tough time. It's hard to make a specific game in the Shin Megami Tensei series as the hardest. Most titles in the franchise are equally difficult as they are engaging. Many western gamers will know of its sub-series Persona but the Megami Tensei games stretch across dozens of titles. They are all known for their difficulty turn-based combat and urban environments with post-apocalyptic themes. Exploiting weaknesses in combat and utilizing demons is key to succeeding in these games. Don't let the difficulty be discouraging, however the narratives present in these games are more than worth the pain combat can bring. Combat in Divinity Original Sin 2 is equally fun and brutal. Enemies and players alike have armor values that act as a second health bar, only they also provide crowd control immunity. This makes dealing as much damage in one turn as possible, commonly referred to as alpha striking, to be the best strategy in original scene 2. To make this worse, enemies have a wide range of movement skills that nullify the importance of ground effects or damage over time skills. If there isn't a damage dealer and a crowd control character in the group, Divinity Original Sin 2 becomes a nightmare to beat, particularly on higher difficulties. All three entries in the Fire Emblem Fates series of games are known for being difficult tactical RPGs. Each game in the series focuses on different gameplay styles such as Conquest being more focused on clearing out levels for additional gold and experience. The issue with this series has nothing to do with Fates but rather Fire Emblem Awakening. Awakening was more focused on getting players into the series by ramping down the number of mechanics enemies use and generally being more forgiving than other installments. Many players jumped from Awakening to Fates and were in for a much more punishing experience than anticipated. Fire Emblem Fates itself is by no means a soul-crushing RPG, but the large jump of difficulty between Awakening and Fates, but the large jump of difficulty between Awakening and the Fates series was jarring at best. Finally, the barrier to entry for Final Fantasy Tactics is incredibly high. Compared to most Final Fantasy titles, tactics focus much more on difficult turn-based encounters and encourage strategy much more than the main entries. As a result, many Final Fantasy fans felt alienated when the game's opening hours demanded near-flawless gameplay. The lack of abilities early on makes for a brutal experience that many veteran turn-based RPG fans might be dissuaded by. It gets much more easier as the game progresses and new abilities are earned. But the early game for tactics is enough to turn many series fans away from it.
Hey guys, that's it. If you guys like the video, leave a like. Let me know what you think of the video. And as always, I hope you enjoy.